Hi students, I am Kashish Munshi and in this lecture we will discuss about the questions that are given in the textbook at the end of your poem in the bazaars of Hyderabad by Sarojini Naidu. I hope you all are like well versed with the poem and understood the poem thoroughly. So now let's start with the question and answer. In this lecture we will discuss uh, the possible answers to the questions that are given at the end of the poem. So students, let's start with the questions that are given on page number 30, making connections. First one, state whether the following statements are true or false about the bazaars of Hyderabad. This is very easy one. Uh, so you have to simply write T or F for, for the statements that are true and F for the state T for the statements that are true and F for the statements that are false in the box. So the merchants sell lentils and rice. So the statement is false because the merchants are actually selling wares. Merchants are different from vendors. So the statement is true. Yes, the merchants and different are vendors are like two different professions or two different people. The fruit men sell fruits and vegetables. False. Because the fruit men sells only fruits. Musician plays the guitar and the drum. So the statement is false because the music musicians are playing sitar, sarangi and drum. The guitar is not played by them. Magicians wake the dead from sleep. False. Magicians are just performing uh, the chanting the eons and like uh, uh, chanting the divine words to get into the power. They do not wake the dead from the sleep. So. The next one, read the following lines and answer the question that follows. What do you sell, O oh, ye merchants? And the first question is, the stanza that this line is taken from describe different things being sold. What are the things that mentioned? So, this, ten, this particular line has been taken from the first stanza. And what are the things that are mentioned in the stanza? The answer is, the things mentioned in the stanza are turbans of crimson and silver color. Crimson we already discussed about like it's a, a red kind of a color. And uh, tunics of purple brocade. Brocade is a very thick fabric that is used to make a pattern um, or a silk kind of silk kind of a thread like gold or silver kind of silk thread is used to make a pattern. And mirror with the panels of amber and draggers with the handles of jade. So these are the things that are mentioned in the uh, stanza. And the stanza, um, this line has been taken from the first stanza. The next question is, who is selling the wares? So it's quite clear. The merchants are selling the wares. Third question, what are the colors and the shades mentioned in this in this stanza? Why do you think the poet has used those colors to describe the waves? So the colors and the shades that are mentioned in the stanza are crimson color, silver, purple, amber and jade. Amber is like a yellowish kind of a color and jade is a green color. So the poetess has used color to create an image of the goods being sold. Students, you can uh, like poet is a neuter gender. It can be used for both poet and poetess, uh, like a female poet and a male poet. And if you mention poetess, then it's fine. But if you write poet also, it would be absolutely fine because poet comes under a neuter gender. And the word poet is like most of the time used for both male and uh, female uh, person who writes a poem. Poetess is a perfect word, but poet is acceptable. Okay. Now look at the second one, B1. Bells for the feet of blue pigeons. Frail as a dragon flies wing. Giddles of gold for the dancers. Scabbards of gold for the king. Now the question is, who is the speaker addressing in this line? So, like speaker here refers to Sarojini Naidu, the poet. So, uh, to whom does she, like is she talking in this line? Whom she is addressing? So the speaker is addressing the goldsmiths. This uh, like lines have been taken from have uh, has been taken from 
third stanza where the poet uh, like goes to goldsmith and asks them what they were making then the next one is apart from girdle and scabbards which what else is made from gold so what is girdle girdle is actually a belt a thick belt or a string that is tied around the waist to keep the cloth in the position you can like it just perform the work of a work of a belt any regular belt that the men or girl, girls or like boys uh, use or wear in, along with the jeans so girdles are nothing but a kind of a belt that is uh, like worn by the dancer especially on their waist and scabbard are the covers for the swords made of leather or metal so the uh, like the covers uh, that are used to cover the swords so they are known as scabbards so uh, apart from girdle and scabbard what else is made from gold so apart from girdle and scabbard bracelets anklets rings and belts are made from gold pick out a simile from the above lines now now let's take a look at c1 crowns for the brow of a bridegroom chaplets to garland his bed sheets of white blossoms new garnered to perfume the sleep of the dead so the questions are what floral ornaments are worn for the woven for the bridegroom so in this stanza we uh, like see that the poet is, is addressing to flower girls and asking them like what are they weaving so they reply in turn the the flower girls reply that they are uh, like uh, weaving the brows for the bridegroom now brows is actually a kind of uh, like a uh, uh, floral kind of an ornament that is worn on forehead so they reply that they are we uh, they are weaving a brows for the bridegroom and apart from that they are also making a like sheet of a white blossom flowers to spread it on the graveyard of a uh, grave of a dead person so the first question is what floral ornaments are woven for the bridegroom so the bridegrooms uh, like they wear crowns with tassels of azure and red color so this is a floral ornament that are like Uh, the flower girls are weaving for the bridegroom the next is what is the significance of the white blossoms so the answer is the sheets sheets of white blossoms are spread over the dead in a funeral so the significance of the blight of white blossoms it reflects like it shows that the person is already de- dead and it is used to spread over a uh, uh, a dead body in a funeral third is the lines talk about two contrasting events in the human life what are these events obviously two different uh, like emotions are expressed or you can say two different events are expressed in this stanza and they both are completely opposite to each other one is a happy moment one is a sad moment so these two events are marriage and death obviously if someone is getting married everyone would be very happy and if some pers- someone dies so the situation or the like the uh, uh, people around them would not be sad would not be happy at all so it would be a very sad and sorrowful situation so the two contrasting events that are mentioned are marriage and death now the third question is what are the vendors maidens and peddlers doing in the bazaar so the vendors maidens and peddlers are selling their merchandise and the wares Uh, the vendors are selling saffron lentil and rice the maidens are selling sandalwood henna and spice the peddlers are selling chessmen and ivory dice now the next two questions that is question number 4 and 5 is your homework try and write in your notebook that's it for today see you in the next lecture in next lecture we'll start with the uh, next chapter that is chapter number 2 okay till then go through the poem once again and take a very good care of yourself thank you